from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Ladies and gentlemen, letting y'all come on in this room so we can get it started. Let everybody come on in the room so we can get this thing started, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing, man? We are in the building, waiting on everybody to pile on in the room. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Ladies and gentlemen, shout out to everybody in the room. <clears throat> yes, we are early today. What's up, Nikki the God? I see you, beloved. <clears throat> Glad to have y'all in here. Uh, before I get started, don't forget, while I'm talking, y'all can go to rootworkstyle.com to get your root work deodorant. It is root work season, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take some calls in a minute, but I want to talk about this attempted revision of the lynching of George Floyd by Derek Chabon. And now the, the white supremacists, they've been very hell-bent on revising what happened Tucker Carlson put up a tweet um, talking about Derek Chavin being in jail for a crime he didn't commit and he's been stabbed 22 times. And if this is allowed to happen, it could happen to you. I told people when they reported Derek Chavin getting poked up in jail, when they reported that, I said, that's to get sympathy. I don't even know the validity of that. I don't even know how you know, if that is accurate or if that really happened to him. But I told people, man, this is what they're going to use that for. They're going to use that for sympathy. They're going to use that for sympathy. And the way they reported that story about him getting poked up in jail, none of it really made sense. So did, I, did he really get poked up in jail? I know it was a lot of folks wanted to celebrate and say, oh, yep, yep, yep. That's a win. That's a victory. <clears throat> but did he really get poked up? Because again, they're doing a lot of this stuff or they're saying and reporting a lot of this stuff for sympathy for him because they want to get him out of jail because the white supremacists don't like to take an L and Derek Chabon getting locked down and sentenced. That's an L for white supremacy. We have to understand what Derek Chabon meant for systematic white supremacy. And part of white supremacy is that you get to kill with impunity, especially black people you get the right to kill with impunity. That's very important. And when a white supremacist suspect is punished for killing or harming a black person, that's a blow to white supremacy. So that's why they're so desperate to revise the history by using the I'm white and I say so rule. I want y'all to really, really understand how serious the I'm white and I say so rule is. The I'm white and I say so rule is the common law of the land that trumps everything. And you'll hear me talk about the I'm white and I say so rule all the time. That goes back to the um, Dred Scott decision with um, Judge Haney, uh, Taney, I forgot what his name is, but I think Judge Taney, that was his name. Um, and the Dred Scott decision that happened in the what 1860s, 1850s, there was a very famous passage in that Supreme Court ruling that a, um, a black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect, meaning a white man don't have to respect your rights as a black person. This was a Supreme Court ruling. And a lot of people try to bury 
what that means. And they say, oh, that was one of the worst decisions in Supreme Court history. But let's be real. That is the common law of the land. That mindset and that passage, a white man is not bound to respect, meaning you're not forced to respect and it's not going to be enforced. You, you don't have to respect the rights of a black person. And that's been the common law that trumps every other law. And we have to understand how common law works. Common law is a codified understanding between groups of people. So whatever's written down on paper, that means nothing. That's why the white supremacists always say, show me a law right now that's against black people. It's a common law, basically, because they're so on code, what's on paper don't mean anything. On paper, you're not supposed to choke somebody to death. You're not supposed to, you know, if somebody's handcuffed on paper, you're not supposed to choke them to death. But we saw that with Derek Chavin kneeling on the neck of George Floyd, killing him. We all saw it with our own eyes, and they're still using the Dred Scott decision, I'm white and I say so rule. Well, no, 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 no. I know what you guys saw with your own eyes, but we're telling you it was a fentanyl death. Well, the coroner said it was a homicide. The coroner said that. You know, he, was, he died because somebody was kneeling on his neck. No, nah, no, 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 no. We don't care about your eyesight. We don't care about science. We don't care about facts. It's all about I'm white and I say so. And we say, as white supremacists, we say that he died because of a fentanyl overdose at the very same moment he was being choked to death. We're white and we say so. Because they're so used to the I'm white and I say so rule. It trumps all the laws. Just like with um, Philando Castile up there in Minnesota who got killed by the suspected white supremacist Latino, and they got in court and said that's justified, even though the Second Amendment was supposed to protect him. He was a legal gun owner. He wasn't a felon, wasn't a criminal. They got pulled over in a traffic stop, and he told the officer, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I have my gun registration, but I, I do have a firearm on me, and the cop just pulled out a gun and shot him to death. And the court system said, hey, I'm white and I say so. Yeah, he, yeah. the officer was in fear of his life. We're white and we say so. Forget about the Second Amendment. See all those Second Amendment thumpers? Notice they weren't caping for Philando Castile. All of these white supremacists talking about the Second Amendment. It ain't about no Second Amendment. It's about I'm white and I say so. In fact, some of those NRA people were lying along with the other people. They tried to say that that um, Philando Castile was reaching for his gun. Some of those NRA people said that lie. Just I'm white and I say so. It looked like he was reaching for his gun. Same thing with Tamir Rice. Remember Tamir Rice got killed up there in Ohio and they tried to lie and say he pulled a gun out, his toy gun out on the cop. And we saw the video, that was a lie, but never mind that. The, the officer did nothing wrong because he's white and he says so. We got to understand how heavy the I'm white and I say so law is. The common law rule of I'm white and I say so is very heavy. We got to understand that. So we bash our brains in pointing out things in, in the Constitution and we, we point to all of these documents. Like, hey, this document says this right here. You're not supposed to do that right here. I'm studying law. I went to certain, such and such law school and the law, the law, and I understand law and you... We're out here getting degree after degree after degree to prove them wrong. And they'll just turn around and be like, okay, great degree, but listen, I'm white and I say so. And I say that Kyle Rittenhouse had a right to shoot people. Yeah. Uneducated, trail apart Kyle Rittenhouse did all types of illegal stuff, going across state lines with um, premeditated shootings with this um, that man on video talking about he wanted to shoot protesters got some kind of straw purchase for the gun they threw that out all, all of the stuff that we go to jail for that we get umpteen years for in jail they threw all that out with kyle this i might not say so it boils down to that it's that simple so when you understand that, you'll, you'll stop being so frustrated, Black folks. I'm, I'm saying that to give y'all some game because we get real frustrated trying to convince these white supremacists of the truth. They know the truth. Like when they call here. This is why I, when I debate them on here, 
<clears throat> yeah, I'm just calm. I'm calm because I know all they're going to do is lie and try to use I'm white and I say so. They have no other play. You stay calm. Don't don't get all belligerent trying to educate them and they're playing dumb. The white supremacists are very smart. You got to understand this. They're, they're smart people. They're smart and they they and they're pathological liars. Once you understand those two dynamics, you know, that will make your journey a little better so that you can not get tripped up by them feigning ignorance and in, in saying weird anti-black stuff and doing weird anti-black stuff all the time. You got to understand warfare. That's how warfare works. Warfare is in the, in the, the book, The Art of War, they state that warfare is about deception. It is. And the white supremacists, they've mastered deception. And when I say it's about deception, that's the the white supremacist, the the Asian version of warfare. See, with black folks, warfare was all about manhood. It was about honor. You you battle your opponent on an equal level. That showed how much of a man you are. You had a fair, straight up and down, head up with them. You know, you're not a, you're attacking the women and kids, and you know, you have poison in them. You know, you you have a straight up. You have a head up. That was um, how we used to look at warfare, and and we still do on a on a micro level. It's all about you know standing up to somebody. You look him in the eye and you fight a man to man. You know, you get a sword, you get a billy club, and y'all go at it. You understand? It was a mano a mano. Or sometimes you get your best warrior against their best warrior, and then they go at it. It was all about being a man, the way you you handle warfare. And it's not about tricking folks. This whole thing, though, that's a white supremacist thing. You get around people, you befriend them, and they welcome you into their community and say, hey, hey let me feed you. Hey, here, here's my family. This is my family. Here's some food. Here's some um, some resources for you to share with your, your community. And then you come in, and then after people help you, you flip on them and then infiltrate them from the inside out. You know, that's always been a cowardly thing. And unfortunately, there have been black people who picked up on those cowardly characteristics that we need to get up out of here. And we see a lot of that on these spaces here. We see a lot of that, a lot of that double cross two face shit that goes on around these circles here, which is a very bad habit that we really need to stop doing. You understand? That's what you get from the white supremacists. Somebody try to help your ass and then you on the back channel trying to double cross them and infiltrate them and undermine them behind the scenes. Eh, that's that's coward shit. And you don't want to act like them. You don't want to act like them at all. But we got a lot of folks in here, though. But but again, we these people, again, they're very desperate to try to get sympathy for Derek Chauvin. They really want him out of jail. They hate when these white supremacists take an L, particularly for harming a black person. Just like that um that that um Asian white man was he what, what was he in Texas or Minnesota? Not Texas, but in Memphis, I forgot what city he was in. He was raping all those sisters. Was it in Louisville? This officer, this Asian and white police officer who identify with white supremacy because he kept referring to himself as white. He was raping all of them sisters and he ended up going to jail and they, you know, they found the man's DNA all over the place. And they're still trying to get that man out of jail. The white supremacists and the anti-black Asians are trying to get that man out of jail right now. They're still trying to campaign to get him out of jail because his victims were primarily black women. And they're trying to use the I'm white and I say so rule with that. So we got to understand how this game is out here. The white, I'm white, not safe, so rule is very, very heavy. All right, let me get some calls in here, because how many folks we got in here? Okay, we got quite a few people in here. All right, let's get, um, let's get Tizzy Bliss. What's up, Tizzy Bliss? And then we'll get Mr. Fennell. What's up, Flex? What's up, Tizzy? How are you? I'm good, man. Uh, see, I got two points. Uh, 
this is common. Like they've been doing this for like years, man. Like uh, every single person we put away for uh, them killing black people or whatever, they always try to appeal it every single time. Oh yeah. Even if uh, not uh, Derek Sh- Chauvin, but uh, Amber Geiger, they still trying to appeal her. Yep. We got uh, we got the the three white men that killed Ahmad Aubrey. They're still trying to appeal them. Yeah. So does that even though they got them transferred to a better jail? Yeah. And uh Judge uh Judge Olu Stevens, he uh was following the rules or whatever, he was following the laws or whatever, because this white business owner was trying to still conduct business during the pandemic. And the mayor turned around and overturned the whole pandemic restriction. And they've been trying to get him off the bench just for enforcing a law that the white man told him to do, to enforce. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. And so it really don't Olu matter, Stevens. man. Yeah. Shout out to Honorable Olu Stevens, man. But uh, it, it it's it just goes hand in hand. They they it don't get old with them. Like, and I don't know, even if they uh don't get it done, they're still gonna keep trying no matter what, just to break our spirit at the end of the day, man. Right. Right. And that and that's right. the thing. It's all about resilience. It's all about persistence. And it's all about nigga. At the end of the day, we say and it goes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Real don't, talk. <laughs> don't let them break y'all spirit, man. The uh conscious black society got it. And I'm very proud of my people, man. I I felt alone for a very long time until I ran into the new black media. And uh D Tubman, shout out to you, Nikki the God, shout out to y'all. Yeah, black women like y'all, man, y'all give us hope. And we just need to keep this going, man. This has been the most momentum I've ever seen black people stay on code. So yes, we're doing indeed. a good job, man. Keep it up, y'all. Yes, indeed, B1. man. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Oh, yeah, shout out to um, Judge Olu Stevens. He's a rider, real big supporter of Judge Olu Stevens. Um, in fact, I think it was Olu Stevens when um, Breonna Taylor got shot and killed and her dude shot back at them race soldiers. You know, they tried to lock her dude up and Judge Olu Stevens said, nah, 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 nah. Nah, that's not going to happen. And then got him up out of there. You see, Judge Olu Stevens is a rider out there in Kentucky. But yeah, man, they're trying to break our spirits like our brother Tizzy said. They're really trying to break our spirit. We got to stay on top of our game. That's why, man, they don't want us focused on a lot of things that are constructive now look this it's okay to kind of lighten up every now and then and you know you don't want to be too serious all the time it's okay to lighten up but the thing is we get too much into low brow shit I, I was on my timeline i don't know why this stuff pops up on my timeline something uh, bad girls club it was some shit from i think the zeus app I don't know how this stuff pops up on my timeline where it's just a bunch of hood rats fighting. What, what, what is this stuff? They got this, this stuff. Now, some of this stuff that can't air on network television no more. Now they got these, these apps that's getting a lot of funding where you can have just a house full of hood rats and a house full of moist niggas just fighting it out and just bopping each other upside the head nonstop. And a lot of that stuff I'm seeing on that Zeus app. Look, how many, let's, let's keep it a bug. How many of y'all got this Zeus app in here? If you got the, raise your hand if you got your, the, the Zeus app. Let's keep it a buck. Some of y'all got the damn Zeus app, and all I see is hardcore plantation ratchetness on that. Come on, let's be real, because people don't ever like to own up to that ratchet shit. I don't know who watching it. Somebody's watching it. If you if you got the Zeus app, put up a section eight emoji. All right. Put up the number eight. Put up a section eight. Put up the number eight for section eight, because that's what your ass is on. That's the audience for that section. Goddamn eight. And I'm not knocking section eight, but that's the audience for that nonsense. Good freaking grief, man. Who uh, do y'all want to sit up and watch that nonsense, dude? Oh, goodness. And again, it, it's every now and then 
it's okay to have low brow, a little low brow don't hurt every now and then. Hell, we got our the Bucci Bear cartoon. That's very low brow. I admit that, but it's funny. You know, it's funny. We do some low brow stuff and then we get right back to business. Bucci Bear, the adventures of Bucci Bear is so ratchet and low. It's, I won't say ratchet, but it's very low brow. <laughs> Is it's funny though. It's parody. It's funny. And shout out to Brother Umar. Umar made a video um responding to the Bucci Bear cartoon. He he he's he's not too pleased with it. He's not too pleased with it. And he took a couple of shots. And you know what? I eat that. I eat that. I let him I'm letting him get his lick back. He deserves to get his lick back. Because we did do a parody of him in the cartoon. So yeah, Umar deserves to get his lick back. And I'm not gonna go back going on the brother. You know, all's fair. Let him let him get his lick back, and I'm not gonna go in on him because again, the cartoon. You know, we 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 hit everybody. We hit a couple of people in the cartoon. The car is funny. The shit is funny. It is funny. So it's all jokes. So again, I wish Brother Umar the best. I wish him the best, but it's not a a reignitement of a beef. I'm not doing that. But you know, if you how many of y'all saw the cartoon? That shit is funny. I'm sorry. Funny is funny. I'm a comic. I'm a comedian, writer. I'm a. I, I'm gonna go for the funny. Fuck that. What's funny is funny. <laughs> and the, how many of y'all saw the? <laughs> That's funny. It's funny. This shit is funny, man. I'm sorry. That shit is funny. You know it's funny. <laughs> you know, when he said the, he's like he has the Buster Douglas, Patty Labelle, Tevin Campbell, Mariah Carey school for boys. That's funny. That shit is funny. It's all jokes. It's funny. Fuck that. That shit is funny. I'm going to go for the funny. So it's not a... I, I could have went, you know, I could have done some real, you know, under the belt shit, but I didn't. If you look at the cartoon, we didn't go under the belt. It wasn't below the belt. You know, it was just, you know, some funny parody stuff. But shout out to Umar. I, I, I wish our brother the best. But I'm not reigniting the beef. There is no beef. We're good. There is no beef. Um, <laughs> Lion Legal. All right, hop on Lion Legal. You to go on the thumbs down. What's up, Lion Legal? Let's get Mr. Lion Legal in here. Hop on Mr. Lion Legal. What's your take on Tucker Carlson? Essentially, he's telling that George Floyd didn't die of uh, choking. Right, which is not true. He died what we saw him die of. He was killed. It was lynched. What do you think? How do you think he died? Do you believe Tucker Carlson? That's a stupid question, man. I'm like, you know, I'm surprised you would ask me that. I don't know you from a can of paint, Umbutu. That's why I'm asking you, sir. Umbutu. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, here's what I think. I think that uh, people have to appreciate that, you know, Lots of people have anti-black hatred, even those who appear to have respectable jobs and appear to be articulate and uh, upstanding. You know, you you can't tell exactly what people truly think. And to, for people to tell you that you've not seen what you've seen with your own eyes is um, very, uh, quite, quite surprising. Right. Pretty shocking. Right. Actually. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's you must have missed the first like ten minutes of this live. You must have just hopped in, right? Yes. There you go. See, that's why you gotta you gotta take your time. Sometimes a lot of you non FBA people, you just kind of jump off the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on dissing me, man. I don't care. Like, like you know, it doesn't affect me if you say I'm not. You know, I'm I'm, I'm non FBA. This that it has no no effect on me whatsoever. I've heard your trash constantly so like you know what's, I don't, what's trash it, it what's trash not affect me what's trash and how am i trying to affect dude you? dude dude let me give you advice right okay hold why on why don't you okay, just okay, okay. okay. first of all um, baba tunde um uh, let me you don't know the rules that i have i don't really take advice from from people from failed homelands where they had to flee i don't really want your advice sir what advice can you give me that's going to be constructive go ahead all right. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Okay. You know, enjoy your enjoy your crappy life. Bye bye. Um, crappy crappy life is the the crappy streets in your homeland, sir. Okay. Okay. The crap is the turds on the sidewalk in your homeland. That's why you had to flee, sir. All right. 
you don't bop up in here talking about you want to give somebody some advice. Y'all, y'all must not have heard the memo. I don't take advice from tethers. You ain't tell me shit. If you have a failed homeland that you fled from, I'm not taking none of your advice. You can't tell me nothing. All right. With, with all love and respect. All right. And when you hop up in our spaces, with all that bass in your voice talking at somebody, you better mind your tone, Baba Tunde, mind your tone. No, no, you're not in a position to talk with all that bass in your voice to me when you're over here eating off our folks because you're over here somewhere. So you mind your tone, all right? You know, wash, wash the jollof off your fingers and show respect. That's what you do. All right, let me get... Uh, some other folks in here because we got a lot of people in the room and shout out to all the non-FBA people it's nothing but love but you know I'm not gonna have that what's up Mr. Stanley Mr. Stanley all right well we'll get Mr. X while we're waiting on Mr. Stanley Mr. X all right Mr. All right. There you go. Okay, it's Stanley. Yeah, what's up, man? What's, what's yo, going on, Stanley? Hey, yo, Torito, you know, I've been following you for a long time since the, you know, Mac lesson back days, you know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. you know, I want to know, when when you started being on this, you know, divisive, dividing, you know, different black groups apart from each other, you know what I'm saying? Because you used to be on some, you know, Pan-African thing, and I used to rock with that. But now, and, you know... Um, what do you mean I was on Pan-Africanism? I'm cool with everybody. Oh, uh, nah, because you used to be like, you know, you embrace, you know, different black people, whether they from the Caribbean or African, you know what I'm saying? You used, to, you used to represent that, but but now it seems like you you know you you dividing now you like dividing the black people based on different different cultures that they come from. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, people from cultures where they got a gazillion different tribes, where they can't get together to the point where they have to bounce because they can't get on code with each other, and then they come and bring that same off code shit over here to us. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I understand that. I mean, right, because I see what, no, but, no, because what you're trying to say is you want us to carry the banner of Pan-Africanism and it be one-sided. And we're not doing that because we're weakened by doing that. That weakens us. And I'm not going to sit here and sell Wakanda to people. And I'm cool with black folks all over the world. But when they can't get it together in their homeland and they bring that same off code shit over here to us, yes, I have a problem with it because they're trying to undermine us and we're not having that over here. The same shit that made oh. you fail there, they're trying to do it here and we're saying no. Shouldn't we say no? Right? You're right. I, I, I respect that. I understand that. But now, do you think all. Oh? Black people that's coming from the Caribbean is an African, awesome, coon type mindset? Not all, but okay. enough. And, and nobody's telling us who's who. And that's the problem. You're not pointing out your coon class to us. See, we, we have enough wherewithal to let folks know who the coons are among us. We will let you know. You're not going to find out on your own. When uh, Sheriff Clark pops up, we'll stop everybody at the door and say, hey, there's a guy named Sheriff Clark. He's a coon, so don't pay attention to him. We'll say, hey, there's a Jesse Lee Peterson over here. He's kind of a coon. Don't pay attention to him. We let people know who the coons are ahead of time. Y'all are not letting us know who the coons are. These niggas are just kind of popping up and ain't nobody saying nothing. And the problem is they're popping up at reparations conferences. They're popping up at committees that's supposed to allocate resources to us and all of a sudden you got somebody with a janky hairline talking about what we don't need to get but we need to give it to immigrants that's a problem sir that is a problem and we are going to have to gatekeep sir and that's what we're doing shouldn't we do because they do that from where they are now where's your family from what part of the caribbean is, is your family from oh from ha from haiti 
Yes, indeed. Yeah. And we can't do shit, Haitian, without y'all permission. If we do something about Haiti or we take something from Haiti or take something from the Caribbean, we get checked. When Michael B. Jordan made a liquor and he named it Dravet and he took that name from the Caribbean culture, the Caribbeans jumped on his damn throat with that. Y'all check us all the time for using anything part of your culture. But when we do it, mm -hmm. oh, you niggas are divisive. So we're not going to play that game. Mm -hmm. When you guys do something constructive, you make mm -hmm. sure to say, stand up for Haiti. Haiti mm -hmm. did that. I'm a Haitian mm -hmm. American. But when you rob mm -hmm. a liquor store, hey, man, we all black. Let's not be divisive. Black is black. We're not playing that game, sir. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. No, no, I understand, but you know, at the I feel like at the end of the day, though, you know what I'm saying? We all black, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, you do got them. Yeah. Well, yeah, when, yeah, we all black when it's negative, though. That's the problem. We all black when it's negative. Y'all say that we all black shit when it's something negative. When you do something positive, you go out of your way to differentiate yourselves from us. And that's a reality, yeah. sir. You feel me? Yeah, I mean, I understand where you come from. Now, well, you when go. you did that movie, 1804, right? Now, what uh -huh. was the purpose behind that? The purpose was to talk about history and give props to history because that's a phenomenal uh -oh. history. And nobody uh, from the Haitian culture was doing anything like that. Why didn't y'all do that? I put that money together and did that movie. You know, that movie's taught in school in Haiti. They teach that, yeah. that movie in school all over Haiti down there. That's to show respect. You see how we do? We come in, mm -hmm. we show respect. We're not trying to take over the culture. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give props to the culture. But when people come yeah. over here, we don't want to hear, well, we work hard and you yeah. NBA niggas are lazy. We don't want to hear that bullshit. When we're giving props, oh. when we're reaching out and also going back mm -hmm. to Haiti, we were trying to get land down there so that we can get down there and build. And niggas was down there finessing. We were using that. We're going down there with the movie. We're trying to get land allocation. We were trying to help people get homes down there. And then people start trying to run a fucking finesse on us down there, man. Let's keep it above. Yeah. I'm not, now, you're right about that because because you know what the problem is, though? In Haiti, it's like you got a lot of really, you got white supremacy. That's the problem because a lot of, you know, you got a lot of foreigners that's occupying land down there and, you know, they're making money. And then, you know, you United States, they occupying a huge natural resources down there, and that's what's you know prevent Haiti from developing right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I understand that, but but you do have a lot of off cold behavior. There's a lot of cats out there with a lot of off cold behavior, and that's the reality of it, brother. But, but you know what it is, though. Thank you. Uh, God, no, I don't want to hear splaining. Now he's Caribbean splaining. It's the white people who are making us do all this. No. Uh, there's a lot of off code behavior. The white the, the white people made us like no. That off code behavior that's on you. Dude, we were down there. We were we were gonna help people get houses down there. The whole shebang, and then it turned into a finesse. They start trying to finesse like crazy down there, man. Man, he he don't want to go there. Uh, where's um? Let me see. Um. Okay, let's get um. Uh, Chairman Shaq. Let's get him in here. This is a new face. I don't remember seeing this face. Chairman Shaq, and then we'll get Mr. X in Somali. All right, Chairman. What's the word? How are you, sir? It's my guy. How are you, sir? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? I am good. What's on your mind, my Jamaican brother? My guy. You know, I was going to say, like, you know, I can't speak for the other, the other Blacks. I was going to say, I can't speak for the other people, but I feel like Jamaicans have been, you know, on code for the most part. Of course, you know, we all got our, our little elements. But these Somalians, I feel like they're the real problem. The Somalians? Well, I think the Somalians are the problem. I mean, there's, and Jamaicans, there's some on code. I, I, won't say, I won't say you're on No, I, I, I can't say you're on code because y'all sent us Kamala Harris. So, no, you don't get that one right there. You know, look, hold on, hold Harris. on. You said we don't warn you. You said we don't warn you, but Kamala Harris, his father, even told y'all what she was. You know what I mean? Mm. So it wasn't a surprise. Yeah, kind of. You know, they, they. Go ahead, my bad. 
Yeah, yeah, they they kind of sent us sent her to the HBCUs to try to infiltrate, and you know, so she was a bad look. But why why are you hating on Somalians? Why are you hating on the Somalians? No, no, no. So so some of them are on cold, but you know what I mean. When I see people being off code, sometimes it do you know. A lot of times I see that blue flag with that star, you know. But we're gonna get them together though. There you go. I got a Somali. Let me get the Somalian guy up here to get his lick back. Mr. Somali, get your lick back, brother. He said y'all ain't shit. I don't believe that. There's some good Somalians out here. Mr. Somali, you want to hop on, sir? How you doing, Tariq? How you doing? Um, it's, not really a, it's not really a lick back thing. I understand what he's kind of saying, but it's a mentality thing, man. I've been in this country over 20 years. Um, my family has that mentality. Some members of my family have an old school mentality where it's kind of like a tribalism thing. And that's every nation, man. Every nation has its bad apples and its good apples. So my response to that is, brother, I understand where you're coming from, but don't look at everybody with just one eye lens, all right? There you go. Here, but here's now, the thing. Now, I have a question. Hold, hold on, because let me, let me address some of that. See, he said, well, everybody's like that. No, no, no. See, a lot of folks who are not FBA, they have this thing, well, you stay away from those groups of blacks. They're the ones who do that. You understand? All of these other non-FBA people, they're the ones with that stay away from that group of black people. That group stay away from them, especially us. When you go to America, stay away from the Yankees, stay away from the uh, Jareers and the Abids and the Akatas. Boy, they got a whole bunch of different names specifically for us. It's never stay away from the white people. No, embrace every white person you can find. It's always stay away from us and then talk about some damn divisiveness because we don't say that. In foundational Black American culture, our parents never told us stay away from the little African kid, stay away from the Caribbean kid. That is never told in foundational Black American households. We've never, ever been told that by our parents. In fact, we've always embraced non-FBA people. We were the ones stomping for you. When y'all would come over here, we would embrace you and bring you into our neighborhoods, into our communities. Let's get this shit straight with the history. It was us helping you all the time. In the 1950s and 60s, when the, some of those first um, exchange students would come over from Africa, and there was some 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 tethers making a big deal about that, how there were some African exchange students coming over from Kenya, um, going to school over here because of some um, um, program. I forgot which president had I, it might have been Kennedy. Some of they had some kind of program for exchange students and African students to come over here and get educated. It was foundational black Americans who was really funding that. And we were the ones allowing you in our homes. Who do you? This was in the middle of Jim Crow. Who the hell do you think you were staying with? You weren't staying with no white people in the middle of Jim Crow. It was foundational black Americans welcoming you into their homes. It was foundational black American churches raising the money to get your airfare together. We've always embraced you guys. Don't talk about no goddamn divisiveness. Y'all be on that bullshit. When black people went over there with, with um, Alfred Sam, um, um, Chief Sam, to try to get land. Y'all were saying that we couldn't get no land over there in the early 1900s. You understand? That divisiveness has always been one way. This shit is deep, man. Family, in the early 1900s, they had um, some white supremacists kidnap some, some African pygmies. And they brought one of them they, I think they were transporting them. Some of them died, but one of them came here. I think the guy, one of the pygmies, his name was Oda Benga, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm, I'm old. My memory is kind of janky with names. Some of the little names and stuff I might not know, but I think the guy's name was Oda Benga. He was a little pygmy, and they would put him in a zoo out here in the United States. Um, I think they had him at the St. Louis World's Fair. One of those fairs, they would have this um, young man, he was very small and his teeth were filed down and they put him in a monkey cage and he was like a human um, animal display. White people would come and look at him like he was an animal. Oda Benga, y'all Google that. Google that name, Oda Benga. 
So white people dehumanized this cat. And he was a big draw. He was a big attraction. This wild African jungle boy. And it was foundational black Americans who said, you know what? Cut that bullshit out. Get that kid out of the damn zoo. Foundate the, the black press here in the United States shut that down and got this kid out of the damn zoo. We said, hey, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Get him out that zoo. Foundational black Americans got, got him closed. They went and got his teeth fixed, got his teeth capped. And they were trying to get him back home to his people. We were trying to get him together, but the, the, the fellow was so depressed, he ended up killing himself. It was a very horrible, sad story. But it was foundational black Americans who was trying to help this cat, this guy, from being dehumanized by the white supremacists. We've always taken in people who are non-FBA and embraced them and tried to help them out. Yeah, he's from the Congo. Yeah, he was going to be at the Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis. That was a real big exposition out there. And I talked about that the other day. Um, he, wouldn't, he, he was an exhibit there. They had him as an exhibit at that exposition. And that's the same exposition that um, our brother Charles Page was on his way to to show off his airplane. It was a foundational black American man from Louisiana named Charles Page who created an aircraft. It was built and he was going to go there and fly it. And when he was transporting it there on train, the white supremacist stole the brother's shit and he lost his money and then fell into obscurity. But he was on his way to that same World's Fair. So it's important to know about history, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important to know about history. Um, let me get um, who we got. We got a lot of folks in here. This was Jackson Harlem, Jackson Harlem. And then we'll get Mr. X in here. Jackson. All right, Jackson, you want to get up? You up? I'll turn the microphone on. Yes, sir. Grand rising, Tariq. Um, blessings to you and the family here. I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah. I've learned that you mm -hmm. and our FBA family, you all help to provide uh, homes for Haiti. And I never hear anybody talk about that activism, maybe because it happened years ago. But uh, I'd like to ask you, is it a we were working on it. We were we were working on it. We were working on it, but it just never fell through. It never came through. But we were trying to get it together down there, but it never came through. Yes, sir. Well, it still matters. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Is it appropriate? And this is no offense, just a question. Is it appropriate to call Caribbeans, Africans and other melanated uh, people? Is it appropriate to call them black when they don't accept that term and they don't have the legal classification like we do? since the 1790s right now here's the thing um you know a lot of people and i'm over here i'm in an, an i'm i'm in the pacific right now i'm i'm not even in the states right now i'm visiting over here where i'm on the other side of the planet and there's an island full of black people over here and they kind of refer to themselves as black too you know they they refer to themselves by their native names but um i've seen the word black around here so even in Australia, in Australia, they call themselves black fellows. They, they acknowledge their blackness. So, you know, globally, we are black. And if people want to acknowledge that, that's fine. But a lot of times, there are a lot of people from Africa and the Caribbean who will look at black as something that we, as foundational black Americans, are recognized as. Because they'll say something like, and I've heard this several times, a person say, well, I'm, I'm mixed with black and Jamaican. So I've heard that. So, so some people make a difference between us black and them black. But the thing is, here's what I, some people are black when it's convenient. So again, when it's something constructive that we do, Hey, we all black, let's take credit for what you've done. And when it's something negative that they do, well, we all black. And if, you know, a Haitian robbed a liquor store, we all black now. So it's a, let's chop this up to blackness. So we have to stop using blackness as a catch-all that falls on us when it's negative. That's why, you know, we use the term foundational black American. So now that cleans up a lot of stuff. So now we're making a distinction. All right, Mr. X, hop on Mr. X. Mr. X. Uh, Mr. X, are you good? 
Mr. X, are you good? All right, so I guess Mr. X ain't doing nothing. Mimi, are you good? I'm real good. How are you? I'm good, Mimi. How are you? I'm great. So what we got now? Do we still fighting for reparations or what? Um, Yeah, who said we weren't? What happened? Well, I just wanted to always talk to you, and I just wanted to understand what is your definition of reparations or reparations? Because it's two different um, categories. Because reparations is slavery. So I'm just trying to figure out, do you want reparations or you want reparations? Because we got that with the stimulus no. check. So that's my question for you, um, Mr. Tyree, with the pretty hair. Oh. Okay. Oh, is this? Oh, this is a me, 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 me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. This is me, me. Okay. Um, is everything all right over there, ma'am? No, no, no. I seen you in Mississippi. I wouldn't even take that little tourist thing. You went to the Baton Rouge. It was up there. I wouldn't even do that. You're very brave. And I thank you for oh. that. I, 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 do you not think I see this shit? The fuck you want me to turn a blind eye? You was um, who did with the gators? In the, like, let me ask you something. What is the difference between crocodiles and alligators? Did you figure that out? No, ma'am. Okay. Because one has a longer nostril than the other. And some of them are illegal. So if you see crocodiles, they are illegal. Because they're supposed to be over there right in another continent. They're supposed to be in it. So if you see a crocodile, that's the ones with the long nostril. They got teeth all the way up there from their nostrils all the way from their jawbone. Now, the alligators, that's what we then. So, how did you feel about that excursion, Mr. Tyreek? Thank you. This is crack, rock cocaine. It isn't glamorous or cool or kid stuff. It's the most addictive kind of cocaine, and it can kill you. What's really bad is nobody knows how much it takes. So every time you use it, you risk dying. It isn't worth it. Look, everybody wants to be cool. But doing it with crack isn't just wrong. It could be dead wrong. All right, Mimi. You good, ma'am? Everything okay? Okay. One more thing I just wanted to say. And if I dare you, and I challenge you to put me out. My husband, I have a husband, a whole man. My husband said a man is not a man until he has children. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? What the fuck? I'm a female. I'm the carrier. I'm just the carrier. I'm a female. Female Female is your carriers. Let the man answer. Let the man answer. Yeah, my bones, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm five, seven, and thin. I can understand what you mean, but that's not just thin. No, what is it? Diane, tell me. Do you know? It's scary, thin. I can believe what you, what you feel. I can believe that. But do you really know? Did you really know? No, you know. Thank you. Anorexia? No way. They've written it? No way. Bulimia? No way. That it's because of drugs? No. Uh-uh. Now, I grant you, I partied. But there have been times when I know I was going through a lot of emotional stress and my eating habits were awful. Whitney dying. Crack rehab fails. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. I make too much money to ever smoke crack. Let's get that straight, okay? Right. We don't do crack. Oh, uh, crack is whack. <laughs> crack is whack. I had to play the whole thing. Crack is whack, people. If you're listening, crack is whack. Crack is whack, guys. Y'all stay off the narcotics, kids. All my young people. 
just say no. We got to go back to the 80s. If somebody offers you crack, crack is not cool. Just say no. Crack is whack. All right. It's not cool. It's not glamorous. Stay away from the drugs. And to my drug dealers, all my dudes out here trapping, can y'all please stop cutting the dope with all that fentanyl? Don't step on the dope. Y'all are cutting it too much. And I know it's always around the first of the month. The first of the month is coming this right before the first. Right before the first, that last, y'all got that last brick. You got to stretch that brick out and then you cut it down and you then stepped on it and mixed it with all types of shit. It's it's really doing a number on your customers. So all of my, my D-boys, don't step on the dope at the end of the month like you do. Don't stretch that brick out to the point where you're, you're, you're just out here slinging junk. My Lord. Oh, goodness. Bless her heart. Bless that woman's heart. I can't even get mad at her. Okay, let me get one more call. Let me get one more call in here. Lord. Can we get one more? And we got a lot of folks in here. You know, I got to eat breakfast. It's, it's where I am. It's, it's early in the morning out here. So I need to go ahead and eat breakfast. You know what? Let me do that. Let me. I'm not going to get no more calls. Let me do this. Let me go do what I do. Let me get up and get get at it. Anyway, guys, it's been real. Go to RootWorkStyle.com to get your root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. RootWorkStyle.com. Y'all have a great afternoon. Peace.